Get ready for the latest GT6 Lakes Fox. It seems the game's endings are sparking some heated debates, from needing to eat and drink for health to the realism of phone batteries, opinions are flying. But let's dive deeper. How about robbing stores as the main missions? Some say it's cool, while others worry it might feel too repetitive. And what about the motivations behind crime in the game? Poverty power or something else for Jason and Lucia? Plus immersive features like refilling gas. Are they a welcome addition or too much? Rockstar's balancing act continues. Stay tuned for more updates. Subscribe if you want me to give away multiple GT6 copies on the release date. Thank you and let's go! So here we are starting off with a fan art boating in Paul Gerhorn. I don't know about the fan art, this is actually an AI with maybe some additions as we can see right here, uh, like new contact, uh, we could see the fan art, but it, it is actually a, uh, it, it is actually a, uh, an, AI, an AI, then we could see the Port Gelhorn, we could see the map, we could see the phone, we could see the money, we can see some uh, bank, bank account or maybe just money on your uh, uh, on your uh, hand and here we can see the information do you know you can order food via clock and bell app open the clock and bell app in your smartphone to order two number nines a number nine large a number six was extra deep a number seven this is just the meme over here but all i'm saying this is a really good art and this guy does a really good work so let's go on do you think one of the gt6 endings could end like this Background, Clyde Champion Barrow and his companion Bonnie Parker were shot to death by officers in an ambush near Sales, Beanville Parish, Louisiana, on May 23, 1934, after one of the most colorful and spectacular manhunt the nation had seen up to that time. They both end up killing each other and you continue as Jack Marston, spoiler. And that's basically what we have, maybe there will be some uh, ending for us or maybe on May 23rd we will get some hints about the storyline about Bonnie and Clyde as Jason and Lucia. Next up, Forza Horizon 5 Drive and Physics. In my opinion, out of all the open world games, the Drive and Physics in Forza Horizon 5 are simply superior. I played a lot of NFS Hit 2, but once I got my hands on Forza, Drive and felt way better. If I play some Forza and then go back to GT5, it just feels like some Far Cry game. So my question is, would it be realistic to expect Forza Physics in GT6? What do you think? Personally, I prefer Forza Physics much more than the arcade physics of GT5 and I would love to have this be in GTA 6. What are some stuff in GT5 you think won't pass on the onto the GT6? I was just thinking of GT4 and 5 and how some really nice features didn't pass on to 5 from 4, like the sum of the climbing mechanics is 4 and I know they were a little choppy but I was always thought it was nice to be able to just hang there if you want and also picking up and throwing trash in 4, uh, I wish 5 had that. Sorry for bad writing, I'm half asleep posting this. Let's discuss, where do you draw the line regarding the realism? This topic di divides a lot of people in this sub, so I would like to keep this discussion civil and this is just something to do while waiting for the investor call. Let me explain what I mean. For example, let's say that you need to eat and drink to keep your health up. So if we want to keep it real, then you would need to go to the bathroom too. And that is where I draw the line. It is too much. Another example is, you can use your phone to browse the internet, but it is not realistic for it to be at infinite 100% battery. So charging your phone is where I draw the line regarding realism and it is too much. Here I will also list some other things that come to mind and have been posted here. Needing to sleep every day, actually going to jail when busted, paying taxes, stealing cars, being very hard, being dismembered by an alligator as a simple joke. How do you think the store robbery will be carried out? Is it an important store that contains something that the characters know about? Or is it really just a random store that they rob for cash? I find it so cool that we see robbers on a smaller scale, the whole story with huge top secret companies was cool in GTA 5, but after a while it maybe goes a little too far. 
Anyway, my only fear was uh, the fact that robbing a store of this type is a main mission is that, well, it's something super simple in a world of GTA. And I mean, it's not the same game, but in Red Dead Redemption 2, it's almost become a reflex when I enter the store to rob the seller and ask him to empty the cash register. You know what I mean. If a store robbery takes 3 hours of preparation in the main mission, but 1 minute in the open world, that can create a weird little gap. After all, we know that Rockstar especially with Red Redemption 2 has always made incredible open worlds and incredible main stories, but has difficulty mixing the two. Nakey Jakey first video sums it all up extremely well. Anyway, let's see what happens, I guess. It's definitely not a one occurrence, although this one in particular may be significant in being their first one together. I don't think all of these will be missions, a lot of them will probably be an optional free roam activity that we will get. Push and pull factors for doing crime. Almost every GT game has what I like to call push and pull factors, for why our characters start doing crime. This term is usually used in migration studies, but I think it's applicable for why people do crimes. A push factor, poverty, lack of ed education or employment opportunities, social exclusion and a familial social influence. A push is the circumstances surrounding a character's situation that may pressure them to do crime. A pull factor, desire for power status, expected financial gain or lack of the perception of risk reward. A pull is an attraction or incentive for our characters doing crime. I think analyzing GT characters this way is fascinating, arguably one of the most important aspects of a good character. Without yapping anymore, what do you think Jason and Lucio's push and pull factors will be? Spoiler tag, because Jason isn't a confirmed name yet. Hot take under no circumstances, GT6 should be like Red Dead Redemption 2. The GT series and the Red Dead series are two completely different things. GT is fast-paced franchise, Red Dead is not. If GT6 would, uh, would be like Red Dead 2, it would be a disaster. The GT universe is designed to be this fact-paced with a car chasing and city hustling, while Red Dead was a story packed with drama and details. And if GT6 would be like it, uh, would lose all of the GT charm and previously in Tree's hat. People forget that GT6 is a sequel to GT5 and not Red Dead 2. Obviously, it should still have some of the Red Dead features, like the breathtaking graphics and awesome details, but in order for it to be the ultimate GTA game, it should have the GTA magic in it. I don't think roleplay features are ruled out when it comes to this game. I don't want this game to be a roleplay game, that isn't what it was made to be, but Rockstar tends to add immersive features that does not take away the feel of the game and make it full on roleplay. I mean, think about it, you can eat food in GT5 and it serves a gameplay purpose, they could have just given you 100% passive hailing, but instead they make you go into a store and purchase food. It's a more immersive feature, but it doesn't make it a full on life simulator, as in Red Dead Redemption 2, Stamina and Health play an even larger part. In Red Dead 2, uh, you have to take care of your horse, and it doesn't feel like roleplay, it feels like a gameplay feature. As I said, I don't want this game to be a roleplay game, but having features like refilling gas isn't that weird. And if we are talking gameplay wise, it could be a cool feature. You would have to refill, let's say, every two hours of driving or something, and it would play into the game not just be a feature that exists. When stealing cars and chased, you might get a car which you can only drive for a few minutes, and it could play into the story even. As I'm going on about gas now, but what I mean is that they can implement these small features without making it roleplay, but rather a more realistic experience with more realistic small features. I just don't see why they couldn't, as long as it does not become a fucking chore trying to make every feature too realistic and boring, then I'm happy about these types of features. If more realistic features are added, then Rockstar won't make it a boring ass roleplay feature, and it will be a feature that slightly alters the way you play. Play. In the same way food does, although it's boring to buy food in GTA. I don't want it to be the roleplay game, but Rockstar is capable of adding these types of features without making it that way. So that's kind of all the information we have for today's video, and if you are interested in more, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next one, and peace.